So this video is on getting your Hi, so this video is setting up SFML with C-Lion on a Windows machine. So the first thing that we want to do is go to the Canvas page that has the, uh, the instructions for setting this up. Uh, and the very first link that we see is going to be our compiler. And this is not the, this is not C-Lion, but this is actually what C-Lion uses to be able to compile your code. So we're going to go ahead and click on that link. And that link should start a download. Just give it a few seconds and, and um, a download should pop up so that we, we can actually get this software. Um, great. And so once we have that pop up, I'm just going to go ahead and say save it to my computer. All right. And so now that we have it downloaded, uh, we'll go and and try to open this file. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select show in finder and if you see in find and when we say show in finder you see that there is not a program associated with opening a 7z so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to google and i'm going to download 7zip so i'm going to do a search for download 7zip and then i'm going to go and click on the link to download this program Right, and so uh, uh, if you're not sure which um, Windows system you're using, you should be able to find that um, under uh, the Windows menu. Um, and then if you type in, I believe if you type in, I'm not a, I'm not a uh, Windows user, so please bear with me. Um, I just typed in control panel and then I saw a little message that said, see if we are 32 or not. And so when I get to the window specification, I see that we are actually using, let me just see if I can find where that is. Oh, I'm sorry, right here. It says that we're using a 64 bit operating system. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, download that version. So I'm gonna go ahead and just download the uh, seven zip version for uh, for my system. All right, and then once that downloads, let's go ahead and run that so that we will have this seven zip program installed on our machine so that it can unzip uh, .7z files. So I'm going to go ahead and install. And it looks like that was a really fast inst installation. Uh, so now let me go ahead and close. And now if I go back to the file that I downloaded, hopefully it will show. It doesn't show, but let's try to double click on it. Um, so let's find the 7z that we actually just download it. And uh, it looks like it's right here. Let me just go ahead and open this file. And I believe the application is, I believe we, I believe we can just say open and can't. All right, there we go. Um, that did not work. Let me see what happens if we open it. All right, so I didn't like that. <laughs> and it crashed my computer. Uh, let, let's go and figure out what's going on. All right, so it looks like it's associated with, it looks like the file is associated with 7-zip. So let's, I don't understand what these things are popping up. Let's zoom, all right. Um, if I right click on the file, I should be able to say 7-zip 
And then I should be able to say extract files. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to choose 7-zip, and then I'm going to say extract files. And uh, what I want to do is extract these files. I'm going to extract them to my, just to my regular C drive. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to browse and I'm just going to go to this PC and I'm going to go to local disk C. Um, you, of course, you're free to put them anywhere, but for me, this is just an easy place to put them. So I'm going to go ahead and put it there. I'm going to select OK. And then if I select OK again, then it's going to start the extraction process. And it shouldn't take too long, um, but it def the time varies depending on what system you're on. Uh, so I'm sorry, it's taking a little bit long, but we'll go ahead and wait for this to finish. And in, in the meantime, while that's while that is uh, downloading, we could uh, head over to the next step. Um, so if we go back to Canvas, the next step says that we want to download. Well, the next step says to download WinZip, but um, we can skip that one, right? Because this was just an this was just a suggestion. I just showed you how to use Seven Z, right? We went and did a Google search for Seven Z, and we downloaded it. Of course, there's a little bit of hiccups, but we got it working. Um, so you don't need to do WinZip if you choose to do 7Z. Basically, you just need to make sure that your computer is able to, uh, to decompress a file. Your computer may already know how to do it, and you don't have to download anything at all. All right, but what I'm going to do is go over to the JetBrains student account, and I'm going to create a JetBrains student account if you haven't already done so. So I'm going to go ahead and click Apply Now. And then I select I'm a student. Uh, level of study is undergraduate. It's computer science or engineering. Uh, your major, let's just say yes. And then when it says graduation date, use the graduation date that you expect to finish your bachelor's degree. So uh, let's say uh, if you're already if you've already been here for two years, and let's say you have two more years left uh, before you get your bachelor's degree, then I'm going to select June of 2023, and uh, I'm just going to select a date, right? Just just give an expected graduate. It doesn't have to be exact. Then go ahead and put in your Pasadena your uh, your school email. So I'm going to put in Dr. Smith at pasadena.edu and uh please uh excuse me i just bought this uh surface so that i can make this tutorial so i'm getting a lot of pop-ups um so go ahead and finish filling out this form and then when you're finished uh you just click apply and then you're going to get an email to confirm and then once you do that, it'll, it'll, have, it'll walk you through the steps to setting up your account. And, and, they, and now you have a user account for, for uh, JetBrains so that you can use all of their software. So let's go and check on the progress of, of that zip. I imagine by now it's probably done zipping. So what I'm gonna do is um, I zipped it to my C drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and browse over to my C drive and just see if I see the folder that I expect. And uh, here we see that it has uh, a folder here. It looks like it, if we open this folder, we get the contents main GW, and that's where our compiler is, right? So um, I'm going to go ahead and just keep note of where that is, right? Just keep a, ment a mental note of where we installed that compiler, because we're going to use that in a second when we download uh, C-Line. So I'm gonna go back to our instructions. So now we've already finished uh, setting up our JetBrains account. So next thing we wanna do is download C-Lion. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the link. And since I'm using a Windows machine, I wanna make sure I use Windows and I'm gonna select download. And uh, my download 
should pop up in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and say save and I'm gonna let that finish. Great, so now it looks like a uh, C line, uh, well, the download is complete. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run this installer so that I can install this program onto my computer. So let's go ahead and do that now. I just give it a, a second for it to run. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. And now C line is gonna do the setup. I'm just gonna go ahead and click next. Um, and I'm fine where it defaults the uh, where the program installs. So I'm just gonna continue to hit next. Uh, the files that we want associated will be .h files, .cpp files, and .hpp files. Um, those are the files that we'll be using in this class. Uh, everything else we can just keep at whatever it defaults to. And uh, let's go ahead and click next. Um, and now it says select the start menu where you want to create your programs uh, shortcuts. Here is uh, they're saying JetBrains. This is basically uh, wherever we're going to do shortcuts for for your program. You can do whatever you want with that. Um, I'm just going to go with the default. So I'm going to click install, and I'm gonna allow that installer to com completely install into the computer. So that might take a few minutes. And I apologize if this video is too long, um, but I want to make sure that everyone sees the complete steps. Uh, feel free to fast forward if you need to. Um, otherwise, you could have the video playing while you're completing the steps and hopefully we're in sync or somewhere near being in sync. Uh, while that's installing, we can definitely move on to the next step. Uh, the next step says to install SFML. So if we go back to Canvas and let's click on the link to, in, to download SFML. Now, it's very important that we choose the correct SFML download. Uh, if you noticed uh, in the previous step, we downloaded the MinGW compiler. So that means that we have to download the min GW version of SFML. And though you may have a 64-bit computer, right? And though we use the 64-bit installer for 7Z, we are using the 32-bit SFML download. So make sure you click this particular download. It's the very last one on the left side. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that. I'm gonna go ahead and say save. And now uh, I'm gonna open the file and it should automatically uh, start the decompress uh, process uh, to extract the files. So let's wait for that to open. It's just gonna take a few minutes. All right, and so here we are extracting. I'm gonna extract again to my C drive. I'm gonna extract it to my C drive just so I know exactly where it is. Um, so I'm gonna click on C and then I'm gonna go ahead and click. Uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Uh, let's try this again. Let's go to downloads and let's double click. Well, it, actually, if we go to downloads now, I can just say right click and I can say 
extract. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry. We can go ahead and say extract all and then browse over to our C drive. All right, so we're going to browse to our C drive and then I'm just going to say select folder. And then I'm going to click extract. Uh, thank you for bearing with me. Uh, as I mentioned before, I am a Mac user. I bought this uh, Surface specifically to do this uh, tutorial. So I'm a little rusty on Windows. Uh, so I hope, I hope you're able to follow me. Uh, we can go and check back while that is uh, extracting. We can go back. It looks like it's done. So if we see now inside of our local C drive, we now have a folder called SFML-2.5.1. And uh, we actually uh, want to make note right, of where this folder is later on in uh, during this tutorial, uh, which is why I chose to just put it in C because it's easier to find that path. Uh, so let's go and see how the progress of our our uh, C line is going. It looks like we are at setup. So that's great. It looks like setup is complete. So I'm going to go ahead and click run C line and then I'm going to click finish. All right. And we're going to go ahead and wait for C line to open. And once C line opens, then we're going to go and set up our compiler. I said to run C Lion, but it looks like it's not running. So if it's not running, that's fine. Let's just go and open C Lion on our computer. So I'm going to go find C Lion, just in the JetBrains folder, and then in the C Lion folder. Then I should have. And exe, which I don't, I don't understand why Windows gives me the blues. Uh, let's see if it created a shortcut. It didn't. Let me just try typing in here. C lion. All right, there we go. We can type there and find C lion. I'm not sure why that didn't open. Uh, but again, like I said, I am a Mac user. So we're going to go ahead and open up C-Lion. All right. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and confirm that I read the, that I read, uh, the user agreement. I'm going to select collect, uh, excuse me, continue. I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, I'm going to say no to uh, data sharing. I'm going to say do not send uh, data sharing. And then I'm going to let uh, C-Lion go ahead and uh, open. All right, and so now at this point, uh, this is where you want to put in your username and password for the JetBrains account that you created earlier in the steps. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my And then once we put that in, it should proceed to continue to open C line. Let's just give it a minute. Uh, yeah, so things like this is exactly why I became a Mac user. Uh, anyways, all right. So now, good. We're we're ready. Uh, C line opened. Uh, let's go to new project. Uh, 
we're going to go ahead and just keep it at the standard language at a uh, 14. You can use 17 if you want, but uh, I tend to, to just use uh, 14. It seems to work fine for all the projects we'll do in this class. I'm going to name this uh, SFML. I'm going to name it SFML template. You can name it whatever you like. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and create this new project. And so the first thing I want to do is get my compiler to work with C Lion so that C Lion can actually start compiling some C code. All right. And so once this is finished opening, we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and close these tips. I don't want to show tips anymore. I'm going to say stop. And now we're going to go to file. We're going to go to settings. We're going to go to build execution deployment and then tool chains. Right. And now we're going to add a new compiler. So I'm just going to go ahead and click. Uh, I could click here and say uh, main GW or I can click on this link. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just click on the plus and say main GW. And now I want to browse over to that MinGW compiler that we downloaded in the very first step, right? So I'm going to click on the three dots here, and I'm going to browse over to that folder, right? And if you recall, um, this is the folder that was extracted after we ran uh, the after we extracted all the files. But this is not the folder that we want to select. We actually want to select the MinGW32 folder inside of that. Now I have seen some students where after they do the extraction, this is the only folder that they get. And if that happens to you, that's fine. That's the folder that we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and select okay. And we should get green checks saying that it was able to find uh, all the compilers and, and we should be good. Um, I'm not going to wait. Well, OK, so here we go. It says that it detected it. It found it. So uh, C line is happy. So if I hit OK, then now we should we could run our basic Hello World uh, project, which will just output Hello World to the console, right? This is the console down here. So let's go ahead and uh, test to see if that is the case. Um, so I'm just going to let C line finish what it's doing. And then we'll try to run. It looks like it's still it's still working. Once this is done, then we'll have our run button here and, and it'll allow us to run our code. All right, so there we go. The run button is now enabled. If I click run, then voila. We have hello world, right? So our program is working. C Lion is able to compile C code. Great. All right, but that doesn't help us with SFML, right? So now we're gonna go ahead and finish the SFML part. So if we go back to Canvas, if we go back to Canvas, there is another link inside of Canvas uh, that directs us to the files in our uh, Canvas so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go to files in our in Canvas and I'm going to go to the Windows SFML folder and in there I'm going to have three things right the three things are CMake modules CMake list.txt and main.cpp I'm going to go ahead and download all of these so a, a a trick to do this is if I if I just go back one right where I can see all of the folders that I want here, right? If I see the Windows SFML folder here, I want to get that entire folder. I want to get all the contents to that folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this as a zip file, and then I'm going to unzip the contents on it. And that way, I only have to do one download. So to do that, you just hover over it, go to the three dots all the way to the right, click on that, and say download. All right, and so it's preparing to download. All right, and then uh, once that folder is downloaded, that's fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and say save it. And once we're complete, I'm gonna go ahead and open it. 
All right. And so now in here we have SFML folder. I'm going to go ahead and extract it. I'm just going to extract it to my download folder because it doesn't really matter. I'm going to say extract all. Um, and that's fine. Uh, I'm going to just say SFML files. I'll just call this SFML files. So for record. Uh, but you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and say extract. All right, and so now we have inside of our downloads, right? If I was to go to downloads, now I have a folder called SFML files. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to copy those three files, right? There's a folder and then there's two files. I want to copy all three of those. So I'm going to uh, do a control C to copy. Now I'm going to browse over to the SFML project that I just created, right? Which I called SFML template. So I'm going to go ahead and browse to that inside of my file explorer. And normally that is going to be under uh, it's going to be under this PC. I'm sorry, it's going to be under this PC, and then it should be users. And then whatever your username is. And then uh, C line projects. All right, and now uh, this is my project that I just created in SFML. I'm sorry, in C Lion. So what I want to do is open that, and I'm going to paste what I just copied. All right, I'm going to paste, and then it's going to ask me, do I want to replace? Right, because if you notice, main.cpp and cmake.cmake uh, CMake list.txt, those were already inside the folder, but I'm replacing them with the new one. So I'm going to go ahead and say replace the files. At, in the destination. Um, I, I, one of those Windows things. I hope this is still recording. Um, my Windows just decided to just uh, go ahead and leave for a second. So uh, here we're back. Um, let me go to our SFML. Let's go to our S. Our excuse me, our C line project, and uh, we're gonna make a couple of edits to the CMake list.txt. All right, so we're going to make a couple of edits to our cmakelist.txt. The first thing that we want to do is uh, line two, where it says uh, project name, and then it says SFML project. Well, I named my project SFML template. So I'm going to actually change that so that it matches my project. All right, and then the next thing that I want to do is uh, I need to make sure that this path is the correct path to where I downloaded and extracted my SFML files. So if we remember, if we go to our C drive, the SFML was, uh, was installed in this folder, right? So if I double click this folder, then I can click here and I can actually copy that path. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that path and then I'm going to go to C Lion and I'm going to replace the path that was there with the actual path where my where my SFML was installed. So I'm going to go ahead and paste. Uh, let me try again. Maybe my copy didn't work well. So let's go and select. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste okay uh paste and so now uh you notice uh the windows path has uh uses backslashes uh rather than forward slashes 
So I'm going to change this to a forward slash uh, because uh, CMake wants to use forward slashes for, for, for paths. Um, all right. And so once I do that, I'm going to click on this reload changes button. All right. And now I should be ready to run on. Uh, oh, well, one thing I totally screwed up on. Uh, that's weird. I thought I changed it to, to template. Uh, but remember, this needs to be the name of our project. Um, this should be SFML template. And then I'm going to go ahead and reload the changes. All right. And then once I reload the changes, I'm going to go and select uh, my SFML template here. Where, where you see where it says SFML template debug, I'm gonna make sure that that is selected. And then if I go to my main.cpp, we are having some issues. Um, I've seen this happen before. And a lot of times when I see this happen, uh, usually it requires uh, just running the program. It just took a while for uh, for C line to update that there's no more errors, but as you see, when I when I hit run, uh, right now it's trying to run the project. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and let it finish running. It says build is finished, and just give it a second, and we have the green circle, right? And when we see this green circle, that means that we have successfully created a SFML project. And so I recommend that you keep this project set up the way it is, right? And when it's time to do a SFML, when it's time for you to start working on a new SFML project, just simply go to your, go to your folder where uh, your C line projects are stored. Um, usually it's gonna be inside of the C drive and then users, your username, and then C Lion project, right? So when it's time for me to create a new SFML project, I'm simply just going to copy this folder. And then I'm gonna paste it and then just rename it to whatever my new project is. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say new project. Right, and then once I do that, I can open this new project in C Lion simply by going to file and then I can say open, and then I'm gonna browse to where that project is. Remember, it's gonna be in C users, username, and then C line projects. And I'm gonna go ahead and open my new project. And uh, here, I'll go ahead and just say this window. And so when I do a new project, what I wanna do is I wanna go to my cmakelist.txt. And I just wanna change the project name to whatever I named my new project, right? In this case, I named it new project. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say new project. And uh, I'll click reload changes. Uh, once that's done, I'm gonna select my new uh, project here. Uh, once it's done. All right, so now I have my new project here. I'm just gonna make sure that it's selected. And if I run, then we should see that my new project should run and then I can make modifications as needed. Uh, so we'll just give it a second for it to complete. All right, and there we go. And there we have our green circle, right? And now we can start making modifications to this new project. And we'll always have our SFML template uh, so that we know that we can always get to a working project uh, for SFML. All right, uh, sorry for some of the hiccups inside of the video, but I hope this was helpful and uh, good luck uh, getting SFML installed in your computer. Thank you.